I found the lump, it was the end of March. It was around March 23rd, and April 1st was when the surgeon called me to tell me that it was positive, and I was on the table April 5th. The surgeon at the time told me that usually when you have a mastectomy, your first surgery isn't your last, and, and he was right. I am having more surgery on Friday, and what they're going to do is go in and take out some more lymph nodes and check the lymph nodes, see if the chemo is doing the job. Um, they'll, and then they'll do a biopsy on the lymph nodes and see if there's any cancer cells left. It was it was pretty hard. It was um, it was scary. It happened really quickly, um, from the time she found the lump to the time that she had the surgery was just a matter of weeks. It was really hard um, trying to be supportive and, and being, having my own fears about it, but still trying to stay positive for, for Kathy's sake. It was in that parking lot. I can remember the exact day, what I was wearing. It sort of burned in my mind. When someone tells you that, it's almost surreal, because you hear it. It wasn't until she started, say, maybe going through chemo and I saw physical results. That's when it hit home, because as far as her work went, there was not a change. I mean, she went through her chemo and came to work. I was somewhat expecting it because of the size of the lump when I found it. It was already the size of a small orange. Uh, it measured five centimeters across, so and it didn't look good from when they did the biopsy, they suspected that, so I somewhat knew. And the surgeon was very honest and open and said, I'm not gonna lie to you, and it's not good. And it's been going on since. Oh, I'm doing okay today, it's been a rough couple days, um, but today's a little bit better. I'm trying to find my positive energy. Does my hair look okay? <laughs> uh, I'm part-time and that's about all I could do right now is part-time. Um, I have different responsibilities right now. I'm working on, uh, been working st with statistics, just adding, totaling. Um, be honest, it is difficult at times to concentrate at work. I can't take on big projects right now. Yeah, we got a good crew, a really supportive crew in the library, and they understand. They're very understanding when I can't make it, when I can't do what I have to do. Lisa is my supervisor. She's my uh, our lead in the library, and uh, without Lisa, I can't say that I had been would have continued to work. She's been wonderful support. She's been very flexible. The whole team in the library has been very flexible and supportive, but. Lisa, especially with everything she does for me, it's greatly appreciated and under the direction of the college for sure too. I still try to get her out on desk a little bit. Um, I know it's tiring, but she gets such energy from that because if you work and you're helping students in our capacity in the library, you do actually get a real positive boost off of it. So I put her out there a bit, not so it's draining, but just so she gets a little bit, yeah, that's good for the endorphins, right? And it's great for the students because they love her. When Kathy comes to work, she comes to work and quite often I'll have to say because there is a friendship there you know hey let's let's have let's have a conversation how are you doing she's just one of those amazing gems that gets dropped in your lap as an employee and uh, since then I've developed a friendship with her and a very amazing working relationship but uh, she's just the kind of person that you end up becoming friends with because she's just a real person that you want to get to know a lot of reading helps too, like working in the library, having access to databases, being well informed really helps a lot. Sometimes not so good to be too informed, but at least I'm getting good information. I've got some really great friends that have helped. Uh, without them, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to keep going. I mean, not only do I need help with day-to-day, -day, some of the day-to-day responsibilities I have. It's emotional support as well. I, mean, I phone Val Hello. quite regularly and Hi. she listens. I'm okay. We've been close friends for about five years and the last few years we talk every day. If we don't talk once a day, even just briefly, 
then usually there's something going on. So how do you guys, how do you guys communicate text? No, no, we're phone people. <laughs> Not long conversations, sometimes just checking in, but at least once a day a phone call. Kathy's generally an upbeat person. Um, I noticed, you, you've already noticed that she's a positive person and she, she's fun to be around. We, we laugh a lot when we're together. We do groceries together. I help her with the groceries. And sometimes we go to the mall when she's able. My husband and my son, they've been great. My husband uses his hum is, uses humor. We use humor a lot in the house, which is uh, always a good thing. We joke about the prosthesis, of course. And, and when I went for the prosthesis, um, after the mastectomy, I asked him if he wanted to pick a size. And <laughs> What's a prosthesis? It's a fake boob. <laughs> that kind of thing. Gave it to him to carry. Told him to carry it on his shoulders for a day. It's quite heavy. You'd be surprised how much weight there is in it. But he's a good support, yeah. It's very difficult at times. Like I said, the last couple of days have been really rough. I've been really low. It's with the upcoming surgery. It's been really stressful. Uh, yeah. And Christmas. I tried That's to go me. Christmas shopping on Friday, thought maybe that would help me feel better, but it was too busy. Black Friday, don't go shopping. <laughs> um, sometimes I'm just trying to get through the days, but uh, my outlook has somewhat changed. Yeah, appreciate the small things. Look after myself. Play with my cats for stress, that sort of thing. Casey and Finnegan. That when I'm not having a good day, they know they cuddle up and they're there, or Finnegan wants to play, or, you know, do what he does, talk to me. <laughs> He'll have his arm around her and they're all cuddled. And yeah, I've never seen cats with such a good relationship. Yeah, me too. I'm a cat person too. I'm on targeted, ther what they call targeted therapy now, and it's called the Herceptin, and, and that's what we were doing a couple of weeks ago at the hospital there, and, and apparently those side effects aren't as bad, so it should, I'm expecting it to ease up, but it's not happening fast enough. And when it takes every, everything you have in your body to sometimes even just get in the shower, it's very frustrating for me to not be doing things. And, and going and doing and keeping my house clean. Just keeping up with work like I used to. So that's, and I'm hoping the pain and neuropathy will, will go away. Oh yeah, I couldn't, during chemo, I couldn't eat bananas. They hurt to eat tomato, uh, tomatoes and that, the acidy food I understood, that because it, it would make sense, because I couldn't eat tomatoes either, but the bananas, it just like, drove me nuts. I couldn't eat a banana because it would actually hurt hurt my tongue. So the t you know, some of the foods would literally bite me back. I had to, I couldn't eat my salt and vinegar chips. It wasn't the hair loss on my head that bothered me. It was my eyebrows and my eyelashes that gave me, it's a lot of trouble. I have no eyelashes and no, I, these are, this is pencil. <laughs> my energy level for sure. That's a big one for me is that I've really, really, um, of all the stress, and, 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 and everything that goes on, all the side effects, that's one of the tough ones that have been, it's been tough to deal with is I want my energy back. I want my normal energy back. I want Kathy back. <laughs> yeah, chemo brain, that's a, a term they use to describe uh, part of the, uh, the, the memory, the, the short-term memory loss, um, the fogginess, unable to concentrate. That's what makes it tough at time. I can get lost in mid-conversation. I can be talking to somebody and completely forget about what I was talking about. Ooh, what was the question, sorry? Take two? <laughs> I think just being around, listening, just being there for her. Um, we go out uh, when we can, when Kathy's able to, and just hang out together and talk. 
She's she's like a warrior. That's all I keep thinking. A frontline warrior who's just bring it and I'll deal with it and I'm gonna surpass it. Quite often in my head is what I gotta keep telling myself. I just keep swimming one day at a time. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm not tired of the day I sleep. It's gonna be better. Keep on swimming. <laughs>